the history of 10th Avenue North. Time, spring 2000. Locale, West Palm Beach, Florida, Palm Beach Atlantic University. I meet a guy named Brian Homan, AKA Biggie B. He introduces me to a man named Jason Manlove Jameson, drummer, architect, lover of many things. The three of us begin to play in a freshman dorm room. We practice oldies, we practice hits, we practice beauty. The next day, a man named Andrew asked me to play a coffee house for the school. I say yes, as long as I could bring a band. He says absolutely. So the three of us converge onto what was known as Common Grounds, a cafe on Palm Beach Atlantic's university campus. We rock the Caspar. Many souls were changed, lives altered. Then we were known as Fraggle Rock. It was just a year later that we were changed to 10th Avenue North. But in between that time, there was a man named Joseph Smith who came along. No, not the founder of the Mormon religion, the Floridian from Jacksonville. He was dating a girl named Selena Esposito with the voice of a siren. They ask us to play at a student conference called Student Venture. So that's when we change our name to 10th Avenue North because we couldn't think of anything better and that's where we lived, off that street. 10th Avenue North. After we played the youth conference, things changed. Selena's and Joseph's relationship got rocky. But before Selena left the band, she performed at Battle of the Bands our sophomore year. We were also accompanied by an electric guitarist named Mark Zimmer, who also happens to play bass, bagpipes, and the didgeridoo. We win Battle of the Bands and open up for Jennifer Knapp and Katie Hudson, now known as Katy Perry. After that summer, we started to dismantle. Selena left, Mark left, it left just the three of us, Jason, Brian, and Mike. Enter Andrew Peter Kripchak Middleton the first. He sings, he plays, he does it all. The end of that school year, we decide to go on our first summer tour, accompanied by a man named Donnie Richards and a Latin sensation, Danny Zayas, Puerto Rican prodigy of all things musical. We tour the country. We sleep on floors. We play for youth groups. We eat massive amounts of bologna. Ow. We save just enough money to record our first full-length album the next year. Don't look back. We meet a man named Tim Combs. He runs sound. The next year we come back to school, he begins running lights, letting us use his car, letting us invade his personal space and his family. We just brought it to the next level. Don't look back. And we haven't. Not until our next record, Speaking of Silence. Kind of an oxymoron, I know. After we record this album, Brian decides to leave the band. He's married now and he decides to go on with a different sort of life. But that leaves us without a bass player. We seek the help of one Jeff Owen, who had filled in a couple times before. He says, yes, I would love to. But then two days later says, I'm sorry, I must recant. He ditches us and goes with Joy Williams. So I'm talking to a sound guy, former roommate of mine at the church named Scott Sanders. I say, Scott, How'd you feel about playing some bass? He says, heck yes. Scott becomes part of the band. Jason, Scott, Danny, Drew, and me. We go full time. We get a free van. We name it Rawhide. We think we're going to get a record deal, but then we don't. Oh. Enter back Jeff Owen. He's gotten off the road with Joey. He decides to pick up his original instrument, the electric guitar, and he joins us for the 10th Avenue North you now know and love today. It was just a few months later that we came to Nashville, recorded a demo at Jason Ingram and Philip Leroux and Rusty Varenkamp. We signed a record deal, recorded a record, we win a Dove Award, and now we all live happily ever after. This has been the history of 10th Avenue North. <laughs>